So over here you can see that I got a scene without any lighting to it. So I'm going to work with something called the three point lighting setup. So for that, I'm going to go over here uh, onto the uh, four views. I'm just going to drag this down so that I can see only the top view as a reference right now. So you can see this right here. So if I were to render this out, let me just rearrange out and yeah, make it at the center. So if I were to render this out, you can see that this actually renders out this kind of a scene right here. So you can see that there's nothing else. There's this plain old reflection here and that's it. But let me add some light to it, especially three light because that, uh, because that is what three light, uh, three point lighting setup means. So I'm going to grab my first light. I'm going to use target light so that uh, the light always focuses on the target. I can move around the target as well if I want to. But anyways, I can go over here, choose the target and it is already in the center, so I don't need to change it. So I'm going to go to light. Let me rearrange the location for this. So before I do that, since I'm going to use, be using as my key light, that is the main light, I'm going to change this into an area light. I'm also going to change the shadows into area so that it is more accurate. So let me just grab this down right here. If I were to change this out, if I were to expand this or move this around, it actually moves around into the place as you can see right here. Let me just drag this back so that I can see all the four views so that I can control the lighting right here. So if I were to move it left, right, you can see that it focuses. This is the key light right here. So it is supposed to be somewhere over here, just like this. So now this is the main light. So let me just render this out to see how it looks. And you can see that the lighting setup actually changes just like this. You can see the shadows and everything else according to the shadows we turn on. And it's immediate, um, it is immediately different from the previous um, output that we see. So this is the previous output as you can see, and this is the one with light. So you can see that it is more dynamic already, just like that. So now let me just close this out. And now I'm going to add in something called a fill light. Fill light is something that is used to actually uh, fill out the light. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go into uh, target light over here, just like this. So let me just change this into an area light as well. So let me just zoom out over here onto this view. Let me just drag this around over uh, this section. So I'm just going to drag it around this section right here around the side where my area light is going to be. Let me just drag this up a bit as well. So I'm going to, I'm using target so it, it focuses on this object itself. But the thing about the fill light is that uh, you do not actually have much intensity to it as the uh, main fill light right here. This is the, uh, this is the, um, um, it does not have much intensity as the key light. So I'm just going to decrease the brightness of this a bit and let's see how that looks now. So I'm also going to, apply an area shadow to this. Let me just decrease the intensity and let's see how that looks now. So it has a bit of an interest in the right side as well as you can see. So you can see the reflection from the left side that is the main key light and the fill light actually fills out the shadows right here. So it is not as harsh as before as you can see. So it is rendering out right here and now let's see the difference in a while. So you can see that this is without the light this one with the key light and this one with the fill. You can see that it lights up this area just like that. So you're thinking just like a photographer. So if I were to drag it down, let me just uh, bring this light up a bit right here. Just bring this light up a bit and this one as well. Uh, just up a bit, just like that. So now I can use something called a backlight as well. So that's something like a rim light, which is used to actually light up the background and give, uh, some, give something like a halo effect. So I'm going to go over here use another target light right here. So I'm going to keep this in the background itself. I want it right at the back, just like this. Okay, right at the back, as you can see. Somewhere around uh, this section, you can see that the, uh, it is in the backlight, just like that. So now you can see that this, is a, I also want to enable the shadow for this, an area shadow. Let's see how that looks like right now. So if I were to press on the play button right here, you can see that it renders out there should be a bit of a backlight over here as well. You can see that there's a bit of a light shine from the back as well. It gives it a bit of an interest. You can immediately see that the object really looks different as you can see right there. So it's loading everything out right here and there you go. All right, so this is the uh, default one without any lighting, key light, fill light, and the backlight. And you can see that there's much more interest 
and the object looks different already. So now let me just close this out and over here what I want to do is I want these lights to act as if they are real. So I want DK to actually take in place. So I'm going to uh, enable the DK in all of these. So I'm going to go on to uh, the type. So over here we can see that there's the general. So as we learned in last lesson, we want to enable the DK on all of the lights. So let me just select the key light right here. This is the shadow. All right. So let me just... Uh, work around with the fall off in the details uh, so i'm going to go over here onto the fall off settings right here and here there's some different fall offs that you can work with so you can work with inverse peer so you can see that immediately the lighting is much brighter so i can work around with its intensity so let me just go over here onto the side right here and select the fall off for this one as well so i'm going to go over here and select the fall off inverse right there and then uh, I'm going to add in an, a fall off over here, a fall off over here as well uh, in verse square because that is mostly physically accurate according to the real world scenario. So let's see how it lo actually looks like in render. So it is actually very, very bright as you can see. Let me just render it out like this so that we can do a comparison right here. You can see that it is very, very bright. So we do need to reduce the intensity a lot actually, not just a bit. You can see that uh, the end areas are actually darker because like that's how real world light actually works like so let it all render so that we can actually see the differences later on so everything is rendered out just like this so you can see that this is the one without any light one with the uh, key light fill light the backlight and then one with the fall off turn on so now I'm going to decrease the intensity of all of these. So this is my light right here. Let me just decrease the fall offs of this one. So I'm going to go over here on to the intensity. So let's see what I can do. So this is the light. I can decrease its fall off. That actually decreases the amount of light that actually signs over here as you can see. Let me just turn on the shadows as well so that I can get some perspective over here. And then for this one, uh, I want fall off to be a bit smaller. So I'm going to go over here. Let me just uh, decrease the size of the fall off right here, just like this. And there you go, this is a smaller fall off right here. And for this one, uh, let me just go over here into the details itself. There's no far special fall off for this one, but anyways, you can control it out right here. So now once I render this, you, you will see that it is much more in line and uh, much more brighter like that. So just like in real uh, life, there's a bit of shadows right here and the light intensity is uh, just like that. There you go. So that is it. And just for a point of interest, I'm going to use something like a uh, window light over here so that you can add more lights. Three point lighting is the main light, but another light that you can add something. I'm going to use something like uh, target light itself. So I'm just going to push it way forward at the back. So I'm going to make this something like a window. So uh, on the light, I'm going to go over here on to the general. I'm going to change this into an area light and I'm going to increase the size of this. So just go over here increase the size of area light right here and uh, this is going to be like a window light right there and then on the light right here i'm just going to change this i'm just going to enable the shadow as area as well and on the details i'm going to turn on the fall off as well so in the square right there so you can see that there's a bit of a background interest right there i'm just going to decrease the intensity of this to make sure that the lighting is i'm just going to increase the uh, amount of the fall off. I'm just going to, to decrease the intensity of the lighting, however, to make it more realistic. This is kind of like a window light uh, that you see. So if I were to render this out, you can now see that there is a bit of a background interest light as well. So you can see that this is something like a light that comes out from a window right here and it is way in the background. Looks much more interesting as well. So since this is an area light, you get this kind of an effect right here. Anyways, you get the idea. So everything is rendered out as you can see. Now let's uh, finally make um, a comparison on all of these types of lights. So now, first of all, let me look at the uh, component without any light right here. The light streak that you see is actually a default light. Once I add a key light, you can see that there's more interest to it. There's shadows and everything. Fill light gives an extra effect from the side that actually make, gives it more, makes it more interesting. Backlight gives a bit of a back illumination to the object, making it model-like. 
and using fall off actually uh, helps us with uh, the fall off settings but it is really bright in the beginning and if i were to go and decrease the fall off area it balances out and if i were to add in a background light something like that that comes out from the window it gives an interesting effect to the overall outcome so lighting does take time but it really gives out interesting effects so you can really see the difference between the one without the light and the one with light so hope you guys learned something as always and as always please like comment share and subscribe